In this episode, I go over my top 10 picks for New Comic Book Day, September 8th, 2021. What is going on guys? Justin here, aka No Good Comics, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, I am really excited to dive into my top 10 picks for New Comic Book Day coming out next week, uh, September 8th, 2021. I cannot believe we are into September now. Uh, time is just flying by, but hopefully everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's excited as I am for the football season. Uh, but before we get into all the comics and the fun stuff, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Uh, if you are in the premiere chat right now, thank you so much for hanging out, taking that time to hang out with me here on this Thursday afternoon-ish, 12.30 Eastern is when I usually premiere these videos. So uh, if you're looking to get into the live premiere chats uh, and you want to catch them, then that's when we do them here, Thursdays, uh, 12.30 Eastern. So um, I'm going to get into the books and then we're going to try to shuffle some things up here. But I, I just want to say, so I have, there are, um, I had 10 books, or, you know, always bringing you 10 books, but um, I had 15 books initially when I first went through the list and picked out the books that jumped out to me that I was either interested in or I've been reading and wanting to see where it goes, um, so on and so forth. So um, I want to give just a couple of um, brief shout outs to, uh, let's see, uh, five um, uh, notable mentions, I should say. So the first couple that I want to mention, well, first I see here that Black Manta is having its own issue number one. I have never really gone and explored the whole Aquaman uh, uh, character or, you know, or the villains or anything that comes along with. But um, I will say this looks really cool. This may peak my list and, and, and be something, you know, up, you know, added on to after the 10 that I, I might want to check out. So just want to mention that that's coming out um, next week. Also, both Joker books, uh, I say Joker books, one's a Suicide Squad book, um, uh, Get Joker, it's issue number two. I really enjoyed that first one. So um, that's definitely on my radar. Just, just again, didn't make my top 10, but it's definitely something I'm interested in. And then the other one was um, uh, this one here, the Joker, pre uh, Joker presents the puzzle box issue number two. I really enjoyed the first issue of that as well. Um, so both of those Joker books, um, are, are, I'm going to be getting, uh, for sure in terms of probably a digital download version. Um, and then the other one I wanted to highlight real quick was this super badass cover army of darkness, um, 1979. This is a, I don't know if this is a one shot or if this is going to carry on here, but, um, I used to like the army of darkness, uh, films. Uh, always like the the kind of dark humor and things that went along with it. Um, but uh, this is being written by uh, Rodney Barnes, so I, I am I am interested in in this. And on top of that, I just wanted to put this cover up here because look how awesome and and uh, you know again me I talk about these horror uh, genres and horror vibes of of all these books that I'm into right now. This is definitely uh, a really badass cover here. So um, uh, and let me see the cover artist here is Jason Sean Alexander. So yeah, that might be one of my my three books it like it really should be in my top 10 and it's basically my 11 um but there was just so many good books that came out and there are some that i want to get a little more into that are issue number ones uh, i always try to get them on my top 10 uh list as well and if you guys are wondering or if you're new for the first time and you're wondering what is this top 10 list exactly um i always like to clarify these are books that i'm interested in um there's no like speculation or or, or um other incentives uh, along with that other than i'm just looking for some really good stories uh with some really good artwork and just trying to enjoy myself so um these are what i'm looking forward to next week new comic book day uh and uh if you haven't already drop a comment let me know what you guys think of this list as i go through it uh if you agree if you disagree if there's anything i missed uh would love to hear your recommendations i'm always open for that um so those were just some of my notable mentions that i wanted to add on in the beginning of this uh this little stream here so um but let's kick it in with uh, my number 10 pick and that is going to go to a dark horse book called last flight out uh, this book here is by Mark Guggenheim and uh, Eduardo uh, uh, Ferragato uh, is the artist. Um, just looked really intriguing to me. I honestly don't know too much about it. I mean, looking at this now, it seems like it's a futuristic, uh, you know, story. Story takes place in a in the future. Uh, it's uh, let's see, with um, with Earth rendering uninhabitable humanity, uh, uh, with Earth rendered uninhabitable. That wow, say that three times. Uh, uh, humanity has chosen to evacuate to the stars. So right away, this book kind of reminded me of We Live. Um, if you guys haven't read that, that Aftershock book um, by the um, by the uh, Miranda Brothers, they um, kind of had a similar thing in a way, although it's not exactly the same. But anyways, the idea basically that you know, Earth is no longer uh, a place to live and it's time to, you know, take off to the stars. Um, now, this particular book here says, however, within just 24 hours left, 
uh, until the last arc leaves forever, um, its designer's estranged daughter goes missing. Can he find her before time runs out and repair the relationship before it's too late? Family, fatherhood, and the hunt for forgiveness shape this thrilling apocalyptic tale. That's all I need to hear. Reading that sounds amazing. Um, I, I'm down. I, I don't even know much about Mark Guggenheim, uh, the writer, but uh, certainly want to check this out. doesn't say how many issues it's going to be, but it is my number 10 pick on the list. Last Flight Out. Uh, let's see. Going into number nine. Um, oh, I'm just going to move that around here. All right. Number nine is an Aftershock book, and you guys know my rule. If it's Aftershock, I am automatically checking it out. Issue number ones. Uh, they have not let me down yet. Uh, this book here, Search for Hugh. Issue number one, and uh, again, don't know much about it, but it uh, doesn't matter because it's Aftershock. Uh, the, <laughs> I will say this cover here looks really badass, and I'm very curious. I mean, if this is, uh, uh, you know, it seems like there's a lot of action involved, maybe martial arts of some sort. Um, the writer, Steve Orlando, uh, familiar with him, and then John Sue doing the, the, oh, also doing the writing, so co-writers. Um, and then the artist here is... Uh, Rubine or, or Rubin. I'm, I'm not very familiar with uh, with that creator, but um, again, it looks awesome, and I uh, definitely want to explore this. And again, anything aftershock, I don't even need to read into what it's about. I am going to give it a shot. So um, that's going to be my number nine pick on the week. Uh, search for Hugh, number one. Uh, let's see, going into number eight here, uh, another issue number one, and I'm really excited. This is another Dark Horse book, uh, Maze book, issue number one. Uh, and this is, again, have no idea what this is about. It's just, it's Jeff Lemire, though, and I am all in on Jeff Lemire. Anything that he's doing here, I uh, certainly want to uh, explore. And especially he's doing the writing. He's doing the, the artwork. Um, you know, I know he's done that for, for a lot of his other, um, other work that he's done. It says, a lonely building inspector still grieving uh, the loss of his puzzling, puzzle-loving daughter uh, receives a mysterious phone call one night from a girl claiming it's her and that she's trapped in the middle of a labyrinth. Convinced that this child has contacted him from beyond this world, he uses his unfinished maze from one of her journals and a map of the city to trace the uh, intricate path through a different plane of reality on an intense and me melancholy adventure to bring his daughter back home. So, uh, yeah, looks uh, a bit trippy. This is actually... So this is um, 48 pages, so I'm curious how many issues there are of this since that is kind of like a double feature in a way um anyways either way um it's jeff lemire so i'm, I'm gonna buy it i'm gonna check it out uh and that's issue number one so that is uh yeah maze maze book issue number one by jeff lemire um let's see that was my number eight so my number seven pick is the me you love in the dark and it's kind of crazy that this book is number seven on my list because i have been i mean i was raving about this first issue i know some people have talked about um, it, it didn't seem like a lot and, and to some degree it, it did feel like a shorter issue or like half of an issue, uh, a little bit on the predictable side, but I really enjoyed it. And I will say that I feel like, um, with Scotty Young doing the writing on this, I feel like his, at least from like with Middle West, I know, I feel like I got that vibe of like these types of books just read better in trade. Um, Either way, I'm on board to just reading issue by issue because I, I, I just want to get into the story. Because overall, I just really enjoyed it. I love the artwork. Um, Jorge Corona doing the art here. Uh, the two of them doing Middle West. I, I loved um, what I've read from Middle West. I still have to finish that series. But um, The Me You Love in the Dark, very, very creepy. Uh, it's about this writer who, or this, uh, this artist who had moved into this new house, basically trying to, um, you know, get away and, and start uh, her new project. And uh, she keeps procrastinating and, and putting it aside and not um, not really getting her work done. Uh, and meanwhile, there's this ghost, apparently, you know, essentially there's this ghost in the house that uh, um, it was like even labeled when she first bought the house that this was like known to be haunted and she didn't care. She wanted to check it out anyways. Uh, and she didn't like want to believe in any of that stuff. Uh, so she basically at one point was like egging it on, egging on the ghost. Like if you exist, like, you know, show yourself, like, you know, almost like calling it out. And, uh, and well, you know, so I, I won't get into all the details, but I thought it was a very good first issue. Um, and this is the second issue here. So, uh, I'm all on board, but it is my number seven pick of the week. The me you love in the dark issue number two by Scotty Young. Um, let's see, going into number six. Uh, so I threw Batman on here, Batman issue 112. 
Um, I've been on and off with talking about Batman. I've been um, at one, you know, certain certain parts of, of the of the series. I've been like obsessed with it. Other times, it's kind of fallen a little bit off the radar for me. Um, I was really excited to uh, last week. I talked about Fear State, the new Fear State Alpha, Batman Fear State Alpha issue number one that came out last week. Um, I just read it. Um, actually today I'm recording this on a Tuesday just read it um, I really enjoyed it it's a perfect setup kind of goes over everything in case you missed anything um, in the previous like 10 issues of Batman um, and a couple of the other series and how it's all kind of bringing stuff together um, I really like the, the the track that it's on and, and kind of the direction it's going um, so with that being said I am going to give it a shot to read all the Fear State issues that come out all the different um uh, you know, connecting issues and things like that, uh, the side series and things. So I, I, I'm all in on that. So with that being said, obviously Batman, the, the main title is a key uh, title to be reading. So um, I'm not going to get into all the details, but if, if you want to get into Fear State, the mainly the reason I put this in here and it's, and it's my number six. So, you know, I am looking forward to it. I am excited for it. Um, uh, other than the fact that, and I should have said this earlier, but it is James Tynan um, that's that's been doing Batman. Uh, I see Brandon Thomas is also credited here for doing some of the writing for this particular issue. And uh, and Jorge Jimenez uh, just love the guy's work. They have such a talent and, uh, and really looking forward to more. If you guys are not reading Batman in general, I would say it's worth going back and reading simply for Jorge Jimenez's work. It's just so, so good. Um, I see penciling done here. Uh, penciling is listed by Max Dunbar as well. Um, so uh, I'm curious if there's like a, a story in the back. Actually, it does look like there, it says, and also featured clown hunter, there might be another story in the back as well. So maybe that's what that is. Um, but either way, um, so the the main reason I want to throw this on here was because of the fact that Fear State is, this is a time to be jumping in. If you do want to uh, follow along, I think that this is the time. Go back, read um, uh, Batman Fear State Alpha issue number one that just came out on September uh, 1st, uh, or technically 30, August 31st, um, and, then, uh, and then jump right into this. That's the next order. So, uh, and I think on the back of these issues, they kind of list out what is next after that. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really enjoying it and uh we'll see how it goes um i know not everybody is loving batman so that's why i'm kind of saying this while walking around eggshells i guess um but either way uh so that's my number uh number six pick on the week uh all right so we're halfway through and i just thought i'd take a minute here to give my shout out of the week my community shout out of the week and this time it's going to go to my good friend daryl over at read your Com read your comics uh, which is read.your.comics over on Instagram. Daryl uh, has been a really great person to this community. Um, I don't believe he does much on YouTube, but he definitely is very active over on uh, Instagram. And I have to say, he brings a wealth of knowledge to a lot of the different comics that I've posted. And I've seen him commenting on other people, uh, their posts in the in the community, mentioning certain details or facts about certain books uh, that we're all sharing. Uh, the guy reads a lot. He knows a lot about his comic books, a lot of Marvel, a lot of DC. Uh, an indie like everything so uh again i, I just appreciate daryl and his, his support for what he's done for the community if you guys don't know him or haven't talked to him before i highly recommend reaching out to him i know he recently just came out with some really cool new t-shirts which by the way i still need to pick one up so um, i'll put those links in the description below in case anyone else is interested uh in getting that and also just checking out daryl's page and uh and chatting it up with him but i do recommend reaching out to daryl if you get a chance um and again that is on instagram over at read Dot your dot comics uh he's just a really good guy so daryl shout out to you my friend keep doing what you're doing uh so that's my comic um community shout out of the week uh let's get into the second half here uh issue number or uh <laughs> book number five on the list so my top 10 picks for new comic book day for next week uh it's gonna go to this book right here the last book you'll ever read issue number two now with that title it probably should be uh the the last book on this list but uh um, but here we are it is issue number, it's my number five pick and i love it i love the first issue i thought it was great um this is a cullen bunn series uh cullen bunn writing it and uh layla lee's doing the artwork which i've 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 been falling in love with her art um just within uh, a few issues that she's put out between this and uh, uh mother of madness and a few other projects that she's been working on recently um so i'm really excited i mean you you can see, I mean, this kind of goes back to my my uh, horror kick. Um, seeing this cover here, kind of these dark vibes. Um, uh, it's a Vault comic, a Vault uh, comic uh, published, which Vault's been doing some really good stuff as well. Uh, it's about this writer, this author, Olivia, Olivia Cade, who had put out a book recently. And this book is basically like causing a lot of, we'll call it stress. 
uh, causing a lot of stress in the world. And it's really more than stress. It's like people are dying uh, from reading this book and hence the name, the last book you'll ever read. Um, but here's the thing with Olivia. She wants to go on tour. Uh, in the first issue, we saw that she was doing a, a book signing and she actually got attacked by somebody because that's how vicious this book was um, where it's making people kill other people and there are, there's like this cult now that's like wanting to kill her uh, for writing this book. And, uh, and this one like creepy lady just like completely goes after her at one point. Um, but so anyways, all that event happens and she still wants to go uh, uh, on tour. So the thing is uh, she hires, you know, towards the end of last issue, she hires a, um, uh, a bodyguard. But essentially the, the rule of thumb for this bodyguard is he's not allowed to read the book as he goes on tour with her. So um, that's kind of the catch. So we get into more, it's very gruesome. Um, it, I thought it was really well done though. The, the, the storytelling, the way that it's laid out, um, kind of telling two stories at once through um, the illustrations versus the actual um, verbiage and certain scenes, um, the dialogue. So it's really, really well done. Um, so that's Cullen Bunn and uh, Layla Lee's doing the uh, last book you'll ever read, issue number two. That's my number five pick of the week. Going into my number four book of the week, really excited to bring this one up. Uh, it's called Not All Robots, issue number two. I talked very highly of issue one, and when I read it, I just fell completely head over heels for this book. It is so good. It's an AWA upshot book. It's written by Mark Russell and uh, Mike Diodato doing the artwork, and that was one of the biggest things that got my attention right off the bat to giving this a shot. Um, so I, uh, you know, reading into this now, and it's very interesting that this is the uh, this is the cover to this book. Um the uh, the first one had some interesting covers as well, but uh, seeing here, you can see the arms and uh, the robots, like <laughs> some of the humans' arms cut off here on the right. Um, but not all robots essentially kind of reminds me of, um, oh man, the Will Smith film, uh, I, Robot, uh, the, Will, the one that Will Smith was in. Um, and kind of, and I know that's based on a book and I know there's a lot of other like themes of books and, and movies and, and TV shows that are kind of like that, but kind of the idea of like humans living alongside with robots only in this particular issue, um, or this series, I should say, uh, the, the subject matter that presents itself as the different topics that the humans and the robots debate about and talk about and the problems that are shown or that show up in this book are what I feel would be very legitimate if this was real life um, and very clever. The writing is very clever. Uh, the dialogue is very clever. Uh, some really funny stuff, some good one-liners, um, some catchy like, I'm trying to think of examples, but just some really like clever things that they came up with for like what marketing would look like in the, in that time. And, uh, and some of the inside jokes that these robots have with each other, uh, of that era. So, and again, I mean, this is a futuristic thing takes place in 2056, as it says. Um, but I, I mean, this easily could be a, a number one pick for me, uh, on this list of 10. It is that good. Um, I, I do recommend it if you guys are not reading it. I assume this is like a five or six issue miniseries. A lot of the AWA Upshot books have been, uh, recently. So, um, although maybe I'm wrong, it would be cool if I was wrong if this continued even longer, uh, than those five or six issues just based on this one first issue that I read, but that's how much I liked it. So anyways, that's going to be my number four pick of the week. Not All Robots, issue number two by Mark Russell uh, and Mike Diodato on the artwork. Um, going into my number three pick, and again, these four really could all be ones. I know I say that all the time. There's like a 1A and a 1B. Here, seriously, like they're all just so great. And I I, I have one edge to why I picked the the one that I did for issue for the for number one, and I'll go over that when I get there. Um, but number three on my list has to be Swamp Thing, issue number seven, and uh, and and this book has been number one on my list in in the past few months uh, for sure, as as other issues have come out. So um, I I love what Ram V is doing. If you guys are not reading this. I highly recommend it. You do not have to know anything about Swamp Thing to get into this book. Um, it is about a new character who has taken over the Swamp Thing helm uh, or the green world, essentially, as they, as they refer to it. So um, you don't need to know much. Um, uh, you know, there are some small things that the writer kind of hints to from back in the Alan Moore days, which is kind of cool as tie-ins. But um, but ultimately, you don't need to know anything. Um whether you're a Swamp Thing person, fan or not, I highly recommend getting this book. Uh, Mike Perkins is doing the artwork here. The panel layouts are so, so similar to how, it was, like how, I mean, Swamp Thing, like that's how, at least from what I know of Swamp Thing is I've been, you know, reading some of the older stuff, the Alan Moore stuff, um, looking into some of the Bernie Wright, Wrightson um, 
covers. You know, I talked about that in some of my uh, recent hauls that I've shown. Um, the layouts, the panel layouts in these books are just so stunning and unique and, and different. And they were even back then when during, you know, Alan Moore's run or even before that, uh, you know, in, in the early 70s. Um, some really unique stuff. And I think that uh, if you like horror stuff, this is something you should be reading. Um, I won't get into all these details, um, but I, I just, I can't talk enough or I can't talk highly enough about Swamp Thing. So um, if there's certainly a book that uh, that you could walk away with today saying, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. I think Swamp Thing uh, should be uh, should be one of those books. Uh, I, I would hope that you walk away with a few. Uh, but uh, so Swamp Thing issue number seven is my number three pick of the week. Uh, going into number two here, Again, easily could be number one. I am going with Nice House on the Lake, issue number four. Another James Tynan book on this list. Uh, he's just killing it. And this book just goes to show. And you guys get the hint. I know I keep talking about horror genre comic books, and, uh, but I really am just obsessed. And this is such a great um, type of book. I, I, it's very different. Um, it's very clever how Tynan does the writing in this, where there are certain aspects of the book that, uh, or at least from past issues, where you get a lot of dialogue on one page. Um, and I think it's just a really good, a really interesting way to tell a story without being a novel, essentially. And I know like Jonathan Hickman has done stuff like this and, and other writers as well. Um, but it, uh, in this book, it's just so well done. Um, and you're dealing with several characters. I think there's like um, nine or 10 characters within this, um, within the series. But uh, uh, if you guys don't know what it's about, I'll give you the, the short, very brief, uh, you know, what this is about. But basically... Nice House on the Lake is about these these uh, group of kids or, or young people who were invited to this house. Uh, they have one connection and that connection, well, some of them know each other. I shouldn't say they have one connection, but they all are connected to this one guy, Walter, who they've kind of grown up with over the years. They all have different experiences with Walter. Um, some of them, a majority of them went to like the same school and that's how they knew each other. Uh, this one girl just met Walter like a year and a half in. Um, she got invited they all kind of have connections, though, and you're learning more and more about that as you go. Um, but something dramatic really happens where essentially the world uh, is on fire. Like people are just dying. Um, a lot of the world is dying and and they don't know why and they're not allowed to leave the house, essentially. Um, but they are promised that they are in a safe environment and that this is essentially like a, a vacation home. Um, so they have the opportunity to live large if they want. The only thing is the world is like burning around them. Uh, and people are dying, including like their friends and family and people that did not get invited to the house uh, at this time. So um, really unique stuff. I can't say nothing about this either, but it's a it's a DC Black Label, certainly not for kids. But I do recommend if you guys like the horror vibes to check out Nice House on the Lake. Uh, and this is issue number four. So not too uh, difficult to get into it now. I know a third printing just came out of issue number one. So uh, I think issue two and three both have second printing. So if you are late to the game here and you want to just get in to read, you definitely can pick those issues up. They are certainly available for cover price, I'm sure, at your local comic shop uh, or online. But uh uh, so not too late going into issue four. So that's my number two pick of the week. And uh, before I get into my number one issue, again, I want to thank everybody here at the premiere chat right now. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me. Uh, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. I'm always curious what you guys think of this list. Um, I appreciate the people who reach out to me. Um, giving me feedback, letting me know of any books that they think I may have missed, which by the way, I realized I, I didn't mention before, Daredevil uh, is another book that uh, normally would be on this list, but for the most part, I've been uh, trying to save up and wait and read on trades, so I'm not buying them issue to issue, um, but Daredevil, and if anybody's wondering, that, that should have been another honorable mention that's certainly up there uh, in terms of uh, what Chips at is doing with that series right now, and uh, and Daredevil just being one of my favorites, so, um, but yeah, let me know in the comment section below uh, what you guys think of this list i always appreciate that um and again don't forget about my um uh, com uh community shout out of the week to daryl um uh put his information in the description below read your comics over on instagram um and uh yeah so uh, i think those are oh and then uh what else was i gonna say this saturday if anyone you watch this um this saturday i do my i'm back with the comic collector origins episode saturday two o'clock eastern time i will be talking and interviewing um with uh comic man andy who i'm really excited to hang out with uh it is not our first time hanging out we've had a, a few um book club events together where we talked about descender and other things so um andy's a really great guy i'm really looking forward to uh talking with him getting to know a little bit more of his background how we got into this hobby i know he recently hit 1k over on uh youtube 
So shout out to Andy. Uh, put his information in the description below. But make sure you swing by Saturday so you can get a live glimpse of the guy yourself and uh, and get a little bit more knowledge into the background of uh, who he is. So, um, okay, so uh, that's all I have for that. Let's get into my number one pick of the week uh, for, for um, New Comic Book Day, September 8th, 2021. That number one pick is going to go to Eve, issue number five by Boom Studio. And uh, Victor Lavelle doing the uh, writing here. Joe Mignon doing the artwork. The The main reason that this book is number one for me, other than the fact of how good it's been, is that this is the finale. This is the finale issue. And so, of course, it's going to be my number one. I am dying to know what happens, how this is going to finish. With how we get the layout... I don't know how it's going to be a good ending. Like it's great. It's been great. Uh, and I'm sad that this is going to be the final issue, at least for now. Maybe this is one of those things where, you know, we get more later, like we live kind of, um, you know, or other books that have kind of been doing stuff like that or, or like Canto or something where there's other series. Maybe there's like another Eve that comes out down the road, but I love, uh, especially issue four, all the different things that we learned here in this book. Um, it's just been great. Uh, and I won't get into those details, but you should be, you should check it out. Um, and it's Boom Studios. I, like I said, it's five issues. Maybe at this point you wait for the trade, um, or I'll share my thoughts on, on the book after the, you know, after I read it. I don't know. Either way, you should consider it. It's really good. I always say it reminds me of the Matrix, kind of how it's about this little girl where, um, uh, she thinks she's, she, she thinks she knows the world she's lived in all her life. Um, but then she finds out basically that she's been asleep this entire time. Um, and she wakes up into a different type of, uh, you know, not so paradise like uh, of an island and a world that is dying uh, with a disease that's out right now. And it's kind of scary because it is kind of like ties into what we've been dealing with uh, with the pandemic over the past year and a half. Um, and but basically, you know, it's it's uh, this girl. She's 11 years old. She goes on an adventure to essentially figure out how to save rescue her dad and save the world. Those are like the two things. Um, she has a little buddy named Wexler who's been kind of traveling with her. That was my dog, by the way, uh, who was pouting. Um, but yeah, anyways, I'm not going to get into all the details. But Eve, issue number five, that is my number one pick of the week for New Comic Book Day next week coming out September 8th. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. What are you picking up? Are you going to be picking up Eve? Have you been enjoying it as much as I have? Uh, and any of these other books that I named, I know I named like 16 books technically this week, but there were just so many great books. I always say it is a great time to be collecting comics and reading comics. Um, it's another great week for comics. That's just it. So, um, I appreciate you all in the chat right now, in the premiere chat. Thank you so much. Make sure you smash the like button on your way out. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And until next time, I will talk to you later.